Okay. Uh, so this is Olaf versus uh, Darius. Um, just set everything up for you guys. Turn off time controls, get the scoreboard on. Start ordering. They swapped jungle support and also top and AD. And hard lock on myself. So there's actually a lot of different variations actually before I do that. Blue side vision only, there we go. There's actually a lot of different variations in how the uh, Darius matchup can be played. Um, and I'll just quickly pause because something happened to level 1 and I don't want to like talk through that yet. So there's different summoner choices you can take. Um, Flash and Ghost is one of the common ones. Uh, obviously Flash Teleport is also really common. Uh, Flash Ignite is also sometimes seen and occasionally someone will run something else or they might even run someone a spellbook. And they play kind of differently because if he has Ghost Flash then he can chase you down. Uh, if you ever make a mistake he can chase you down until you die. So like you have to play kind of differently depending on how that goes. But anyway let's just keep going with the level 1. Uh, Cass sees someone walk into this bush We see that sort of no one else is there. I queue in just to check. Cass wants to go in, and I'll just like quickly point out I didn't like this plan, but I went with it anyway. And of course, because the plan was bad, the plan failed. The reason the plan was bad, in case you weren't aware, is because we only had vision, as I just go back real quick so that you can see that, we only had vision of this bush. We didn't have vision of this bush or this bush. And we also saw that someone was around here earlier, so there was so much we didn't have vision of. We didn't have Zodrani nearby, our bot lane wasn't nearby. If we had five people here, this plan would have been okay. I don't want to call it good, but it would have been okay. Um, like, our level one's pretty good, their level one's not awful either, especially with Leona instant stun, Zaya can uh, pull through with E, and Darius can just like sit there and do a shit ton of stuff with his Q. Um, but we have Olaf as well, so it sort of evens out. Olaf is so powerful. But yeah, so we just get jumped. Um, I blow my flash, I still die. So because Cass made a really bad call and I followed the really bad call, which is my fault as well, you don't just blame it on the person making the call, but also the person following the call. Um, I die, I have no flash, and now Zaya has a free longsword. But <laughs> More problematically for me, I just lost my only mobility against the double mobility summoners um, and also a Silas. A Silas who still has his flash and he has his, he has his E and like it's basically if he appears top I will die. Even if I play safe I will die. I have to play so far back that it's like basically not worth doing. Um, we try to sort of slow him down a little bit by being a dick at his raptors. I get a few of them, so like that'll slow him down a little bit. Um, but even now, if I just slow it down real quick, I put myself in a sort of a, a really shit position where if Darius fights me, there's a chance that he'll win. Um, at the very least, there's a high chance that I can't kill him in time before Silas arrives if he like just sort of runs this way or runs at me. So <laughs> even that was a risk. Um, and that was again a, a cast call. <laughs> you can see I sort of start half-heartedly fighting him. Interestingly, he doesn't decide to fight back. I think a lot of that's just he started door and shield. Um, usually the people, the Darius players who want to cheese you will be starting Doran's blade. Um, just you get the extra stats, you get the extra AD, uh, which is very useful. I know that Silas is gonna sort of be nearby, um, but I also saw, you noticed he was quite low. Um, and the wave is actually still pushing towards me. So there's a couple of good things about that, is that now Darius is really low, Silas is kind of low, so he's here now, and unfortunately kind of low, doesn't quite cut it, because they can both just flash away. And you can see me pinging all the summoners, and the most frustrating part about this is that if I had my flash, if I had not listened to Cass at level 1, then I would have probably killed them both. 
at the very least I would have killed one of them and, and probably also not died. So there's sort of a cascading effect from like the level 1 has now influenced my level 2. Um, the only upside to that is one, the wave is still in a good position for me, in a defensive position for me, and two, Darius has burnt both of his summoners to sort of get out of that really hairy situation. So, despite the fact that I have no items, there's a chance that I will be able to, wow, bot lane, really close, uh, there's a chance that I will be able to turn it around so long as Silas isn't nearby. Um, and even if the Silas is nearby, he's going to have to appear really fast and like at the perfect time because he doesn't have flash. So it's a risk that Silas is here or Silas is here. It's mitigated slightly because Sidrani is nearby, but she's also pretty low. Like if we get into a proper fight, then you know, it's going to be pretty bad. I decided to just commit, knowing that Darius has no summoners, um, and also noticing that his items aren't that great. Um, Boots is not combat stats, Longsword is, you know, it is combat stats, but it's not as efficient as Doran's Blade. If I'd, He probably didn't have enough gold, but if, in theory, he just came back with, like, a Doran's Blade after starting a Doran's Blade already, and he added a Longsword, then that fight for me would have been way more difficult, maybe impossible, I'm not sure. But because he came back with like this particular set of items after starting Doran's shield, it was, you know, not that hard for me. I had quite a bit of um, much Pharah. We see Silas mid, unfortunately, cast eyes to it. Um, but that does sort of give me the safety to do whatever I want. Because I got the kill and I have this amount of gold, I'm deciding to go back. I'll probably go Kindle Gem Longsword is what I'm expecting. There's the Kindle Gem, maybe I'm thinking about it. How much gold do I have? Not much. Doran's Blade. Okay, so I must have been waiting for the gold, because as soon as I got it, I left. Um, so Doran's will delay my Black Cleaver a little bit, but it also basically means that any fight that would otherwise be even between me and Darius is now favorable to me by more than one auto attack. So he has to really catch me out this for like a kill to to go to him 1v1 um and if silas does gank then it increases the chance that i can you know kill somebody before dying or just turn it around completely i have a level lead um now i have also have an item lead um we don't really know where silas is johnny goes for like this really weird gank where Darius is never in Q range for me, so there's like there's no way for me to set up the gank, but she tries to force it anyway, which just sort of, I don't know, wastes time. I don't really understand like what the idea there was, but knowing that um, Silas is not nearby, I start going for aggressive trades. Uh, I make sure that you see four stacks and then I leave, I make sure he doesn't get the fifth stack. Um, even if you walk away with the fifth stack, uh, you'll take quite a lot of bleed damage. Like even he gives him bonus AD, right? So like that'll make his autos hurt more, make his abilities hurt more. But just the bleed itself is like what I know, like a hundred extra damage if you got the fifth stack, something really high. Um, just because if you factor in that the fourth stack was already running out, and that you've refreshed the bleed, but then you've also given it a huge AD ratio on top of it. So it's it's a significant amount of damage. Um, so maybe not 100 damage at this stage of the game, but it still would have been like a non-trivial amount of damage to take if I had let him get the fifth stack as I was walking away. Uh, Sidrani, uh, Sidrani wants to dive this. I'm going to slow it down so I can talk about this a little bit. She is not that healthy, and she hasn't bought any health either. So the person who should be tanking this is actually me. I should be going in first, tanking it with ult, and so Johnny just instead, I don't know, she goes in but she also misses her ult. Um, if she didn't miss the ult then that would have been fine because we can just like burst down the Starius super quickly and he won't do any damage back. Instead I have to commit going in um, and so Johnny ends up dying because the Silas arrives. And now I'm sort of in this weird spot where I'm behind his turret in a wave of minions, my ult is 
on its way out, I'll just go back to half speed so you can sort of see this fight. Um, I make a call to try to keep fighting him, and then something really weird happens. Um, I'm just gonna speed up to that point, and then we'll watch that in slow motion. So I, I decide that my best way out of here is to kill him by flashing over his ability damage. So I flash over his ability damage, and then it still does 152 at my new location. Which, I don't really understand how that works. Um, like, I, I don't actually know Silas's kit in great detail, so just for my own curiosity I guess, let's just watch that back and see which ability that was and then read what the tooltip says to figure out how bullshit that was and how much is it just like I don't understand what I'm doing. So this damage, the 153 damage, is not his Q. It's his W. Okay. Okay, fair enough. So I flashed... I tried to flash the Q damage. I don't know if I successfully did. Uh, and then you finish him off the W because, I don't know, Salus does a lot of damage and he's super fucking fed right now. Because he got kills in every lane. So he's... This is basically... He's got basically a full item. Um, a full laner's item. Because the jungle item is a little bit cheaper. And... You know, I have half an item, so <laughs> small difference. Um, Nocturne begins, let's put it that way. Nocturne begins at this stage of the game. And the Nocturne will continue for the rest of the game, and there's nothing Olaf can do about that. And that's one of the weaknesses as, uh, that Olaf has as a champion. If I was playing just about any other top lane champion, there would be something I could do to and make up for the fact that Noc Nocturne is diving and killing one of our carriers. Um, as Olaf, the only thing you can really do is try to answer back on the enemy's carry, um, and sort of hope that it works. But I guess we'll sort of get to that a bit later when it's a bit more relevant. So I'm just going for another all-in fight, because um, I know that Darius doesn't have ult, because he used it on Sidrani earlier. Uh, I don't have ult either, but I don't really care. Uh, you can see I actually bought double longsword. Uh, I couldn't afford, I assume, I couldn't afford a completed phage, but I wanted to come back to lane with as much power as possible to do something like this. Um, and then I do make a, I do take a gamble. I gamble that um, Silas will not be coming back to lane, but uh, that was incorrect, and I die for it. Once again, I decide my most likely scenario, uh, well, most likely successful scenario, is to try to fight Silas back once my W cooldown has returned. Uh, that's why I sort of hesitated before turning onto him. Um, and of course, it doesn't fucking matter because Silas is the highest level in the game and he's still fucking fed, just as he was fucking fed like 60 seconds earlier. But I didn't think I could run away in that scenario. Um, if I just ulted and walked away, I'm pretty sure he would kill me because I lose MR if I ult. Um, and if I don't ult, I'm pretty sure he would still kill me because he stole my ult, which means I can't CC him, which means he can just keep coming after me. Um, so I guess the lesson there is Silas is really fucking strong if he gets a small lead. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like there's not a great many champions that could have fought me so easily there um, in the jungle. Like if that was a, a Lee Sin or a Jarvan or a Xin Zhao, I'm pretty sure I would have won the fight against them, but because it was Silas, I just couldn't. Um, <laughs> so I guess Silas is good against the left, question mark? I don't really, I don't know, I don't know much about Silas. You can see the Nocturne is continuing. While that's happening, I'm just sort of harassing Darius under his tower. I'm trying to get him low enough that I can sort of feel comfortable diving him. The Nocturne continues. The Sidrani also continues. And I'm still harassing Darius. He got low enough that he's sort of thinking about recalling. But he's not going to because, I don't know, I guess he's greedy, so I'm probably going to try to kill him. 
Right? Okay, I missed my setup axe, but that's fine. Yeah, so I decide I'm just gonna kill him. And you can see I didn't play that perfectly. If he had successfully altered, um, maybe I die on the exit. How much damage does alt deal? Maybe, what, 200? Physical damage without five stacks. Um, or just true damage? I, I forget. Like, I know Garanalt is magic damage, and if it's the villain, it's true damage, but I forget about Darius Alt. So maybe we'll just quickly toggle the vision, and we can have a quick look. It is true damage. Always true damage. Okay. I would have known that, like, a while ago, but Darius is. I don't know. No one's playing him right now except this guy in solo queue for me. So. There you go, it would have been, uh, not max stacks, it would have been maybe one, 180 true damage, something around there, 185, 200 maybe. Um, I'd have to go back and check the exact number, but yeah, it, it would have been enough to maybe have killed me. Either way, I finished off the turret and he hasn't taken any plates yet, so I'm really strong, Darius is really weak, but guess who? It's Silas. Silas is also really strong right now. And he's trying to bully my bot lane. I see Sojani's near the top side, and given that Darius is so weak and like it doesn't matter what happens to him, um, I figure I should probably come bot lane and like help out this Kate, stop her from getting bullied so much. And then Nocturne happens, and of course I can't do anything about Nocturne because Nocturne. I take out Silas and I get his bounty. So now it's basically who is the bigger carry? Me with a tower and five plates, or Silas with his eight kills, six assists in the jungle, and somehow more CS than anyone else in the game. Zaya makes a mistake. I throw some lightning on her face and she dies. And that's great. And then there's this weird ping that I should like be scared of nobody because Darius is mid, Nocturne was dead, Zaya just died, Silas died down here, and it was just no one was actually there, but for some reason somebody still pinged me back. So that was interesting. But I mean, I was gonna go back anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Cassiopeia has a bad time in the mid lane, but let's not worry too much about that right now. Um, so in terms of how fights will play out from here, we have not the best scenario. We have me who can't peel, so Johnny who can sort of peel a little bit, Cass who can sort of self peel and peel for others a little bit depending on how well she ults, uh, Caitlyn who can't really peel against this particular composition. She can kite a little bit, but like if she gets Leona altered or like Nocturne altered then you know, good luck. Fortunately for me, I find some free kills in the bottom lane. They take the tower, which I mean, I guess technically maybe I could have prevented, but I didn't. And then my team donates all of their lives away in the mid lane. So despite the fact that I soaked two people's pressure in the bottom lane, and we had decent vision of everyone else, my team made it a 3 for 2 against us. 3 for 3? Three? 3 for 3, yeah, Zaya died, so it was a 3 for 3. Instead of being good, it was just like even. But then, of course, Cassiopeia makes it a 3 for 4. And I unfortunately can't fight these guys right now because I don't have my ult just yet. Because uh, I used it in the bottom lane. I make sure Nocturne's really low so that, like they get really uncomfortable about being around, and if they stay, then I can just ult them in like 5 seconds and kill them. Um, unfortunately, they don't stay, so can't do that. But at this stage, I'm basically trying to figure out ways to not lose this game. Um, if the game continues at the current pace, I expect to lose it from this situation. Maybe 70... 75, something like that, percent of the time. Because uh, Silas, Silas can do things that Olaf can't. He can go in and he can kill a carry, except when he does it, he doesn't have to die for doing it. Whereas if I try to do what this guy's doing, then I die. 
I, I can deal with maybe one person at once. Silas can go in and he can just AoE like everything at the same time. And then he can just steal people's ults and keep doing it. Like it, it's... It's a really difficult spot to be in. Where I'm, I'm just getting outscaled and I know it. Um, I'm against one, two, three AD threats. A tank support and then one single AP champion who's not even supposed to be like full AP. And I'm still having to build MR because this guy's so fucking fed. And if I don't build the MR then I'm just gonna die to him. Um, I get a little bit of synergy building Spirit Visage because uh, no one else here can really just sit up against me and fight me. Like this isn't a Jax. Um, Nocturne is burst based especially with this build. Um, the Darius is just really weak in general plus he built Merc Treads instead of Tabo, which means that I can fight him much more easily. Um, so even though the Spirit of Sarge is not as efficient versus like Darius, Nocturne, whatever, um, it's still... I can sort of get away with it because his build isn't efficient either and Nocturne's build isn't adequate to kill me uh, just with basic items. Okay, let's talk through this fight. This is a fight I didn't want, but Sidrani did. So we have another case of my teammates in this scenario don't really have a good understanding of what a good fight entails. There's literally two enemies in the top lane and we're currently losing the fight. Cassiopeia is already dead, so this started off as a 4v3. Nocturne Ult is down, so like, we have that going for us at least. I know I can't kill Silas very quickly, but I can kill Nocturne real quickly, so I turn onto the Nocturne. Caitlyn is really low, so she's like already left. Um, I have no choice but to turn onto the Silas. And of course, I die. Cassiopeia TPs in, we'll just go back to 1x speed. Cassiopeia TPs in, Sudrani of course dies. Uh, Cassiopeia will probably die from here. Uh, yep, so Cassiopeia dies, the only person who survives is Kate, and TLDR, awful fight, and beyond the fact it was an awful fight, Darius is now pushed from here all the way to here, the turrets are less than half health. Zerath is probably going to ult, based on my memory, yep, Zerath ult is like, sort of thinned the wave out a little bit, but still, like, that was, not only was the fight really bad, in like a, a localized sense, like, the three people on the enemy team versus the four of us. It was bad in a global sense because even if the fight was even, which is sort of a generous call, if the fight was even, Darius still makes the global scenario better for the enemy team rather than our team. So that's mm, just a very, very poor call. My spirit massage is completed, so the next time I get into a fight where I can sort of just sit there and lifesteal, I'm gonna be able to do that a little bit better. I get a free kill into Saya because she's too far forward. Um, my issue with that is that now we can't do anything else. There's no dragon to take, uh, there's no herald to take, and I'm the main driving force of our team right now. We have a 1 and 5 Sudrani, a 2 and 7 Cassiopeia. A 3 and 6 Caitlyn and a 1 and 8 Zera. Like, if I don't make something happen in the fight, then we simply lose the fight. Nocturne ults, nothing happens. And then we sort of get a weird situation here where Silas is sort of overdiving. He's diving into 5 of us. He only has the support of Leona. He half has the support of Darius. Nocturne is up here and has no ult, so he can't join the fight. Let's return to 1x speed. I still don't have ult, so this fight isn't ideal for me, but the fight is so bad for their team that it doesn't even matter. Darius manages to still, despite all of that, return two kills by flashing and ulting a second person. But um, that's that was sort of a freebie by the enemy team. Um, that wasn't us outplaying them, that wasn't, you know, holy shit, we set up a really good fight. That was them walking in and killing themselves. Which is, you know, great for us, but there's not much to take away from that. Other than, wow, maybe we can win because the other team doesn't want to. Um, I want to get some damage onto this, and then... Nocturne appears on my left flank. 
and I waste my ult because I am so surprised that Nocturne was there. As we killed three people, um, he sees us pushing mid and decides not to be there. But at the very last minute, he decides, hmm, maybe I should defend this tower that I knew was being pushed a year ago. Nocturne comes out of the flank in a position that I don't think he should have been in. And kills me, and because of that, Zerath dies, because once I die, everyone else obviously dies. Because, you know, that's how the game works, when everyone is really far behind and one person is not. If the person who's ahead dies, everyone else dies. Problem here, as uh, Caitlyn also just dies because I'm dead, and that happens, then everyone else dies. That's the rule we have going. I TP in to make sure that least amount of people die. I still don't have ult, so I do not want to fight. I ping this fact. And so Johnny just about kills herself. Yes, returning to the previous point. Um, I'm just going to pause, because this is genuinely important. They have Darius being a threat, even if Silas dies. They have Nocturne being a threat, even if Silas dies. They have Zaya being a reasonable threat, because she has lethal tempo, even if Silas dies. If I die, Sudrani does no damage and has almost no durability. She has a bit of CC, which is useful, but only in so far as it's CC for people who do the deal damage. Cass has very little damage compared to what she could have at this stage of the game, being 2, 8, and 4. She has sort of just enough gold cool to have some items, 7,000 versus 10,000 on the enemy Nocturne but she doesn't deal enough damage to make up for the fact that there are bigger threats on the enemy team. Caitlyn actually has an itemization advantage over Zaya, but again, Lethal Tempo completely negates that advantage. Um, and Zaya with Lethal Tempo with just one and a half items is at least as good as two and a half items Kate with Fleet Footwork in terms of threats. So, again, I die, rest of team can't handle it. Silas dies, rest of team can handle it. And now that is the big fuck this moment where I can't reasonably do anything about the comps. We fight for the Baron because if we don't, we're probably going to lose the game. I focus basically whoever I think I can kill, and then I try to run away. The inner flash is after me, so we don't, like, I don't survive that. But at the very least, we did stop their Baron. Um, <laughs> and if I sound really, like, <laughs> resigned and disheartened in this replay, it's because I was resigned and disheartened during the game. Because, short of Silas killing himself, there's not really many ways that we can win this game. We basically win this game from here by the enemy team making mistakes. The agency of the victory is with the enemy team. If we play well, if I play well, Sidrani plays well, Cass gets a good ult, Sidrani gets good CC, Kate gets heaps of damage while kiting really well, and Zerath also gets heaps of damage while kiting really well, we still lose. If they also play well. Because that's what happens when the comps are this. And the gold distribution is this. We go for the dragon while Silas is down. Nocturne goes in and tries to kill the full tank Sudrani. Um, doesn't go very well for them. They sort of burn the Nocturne ult and get nothing. Um, but people are respawning, Cass isn't there, so Johnny is, was really low, so she recalled, so we decided not to stick around and do anything. Um, I'm up to four items, I have Righteous Glory. The Righteous Glory is mostly to try and reach Zaya real fast and try to kill her real fast. Um, she can slow it down a little bit by ulting. Um, like, she'll just sort of waste. It's what, one and a half seconds of my ult duration, so that's 25% of my ult's duration because it only lasts six seconds. 
Um, so that's actually a pretty big deal. That Zaya can do that. On top of that, if she ults and then she pulls back with E, she does damage, and then she also, by doing that, can zone other people away. You can see here I'm donating Kate farm. I need my carries to be really strong. And if they can't be really strong, I need them to be strong. And if they can't be strong, I need them to just be adequate. And so that's sort of my goal right now, to try and get my carries to adequate status. Um, go real slow here because... I honestly don't know what Cassiopeia was thinking. Like, it... I thought about it, and I still don't understand. She was trying to split push against the Nocturne who's been killing her the entire game. And she has Ceres Morellos to try and beat him with. If she had an hourglass, then, you know, maybe under her turret she can survive. And like, it'll work, but no, she has Morellos, she can't fucking do that, but she tries to anyway. So now we're in a 4v5. Uh, Nocturne doesn't have ult and he's kind of low, so it's sort of more for 4v4. I see Zaya as maybe a kill. Um, but I don't have flash for it. And now I'm gonna slow this down so we can sort of see what's happening. I'm sort of in this... Actually, I'll just straight up pause it. Darius is here, he's fighting Sidrani and Kate. Zerath is nowhere to be seen. He's low, so he can't really enter the fight. He's already used his ult, so he's basically gonna contribute nothing. Nocturne is down here, he's gonna contribute basically nothing because he doesn't have ult either. And Cassiopeia is dead. So that's the situation. Zaya's here. I have to try and fight three people here, depending on whether Zaya goes here or if Zaya goes here. And I have to try to fight the guy who has more kills and assists than basically our entire team combined. Let's go to maybe half X speed. Zaya sort of half-heartedly looks on the left side of the fight, decides that's not going to work, so she goes to the right side of the fight. I intercept her and she ults, which again wastes some of my ult duration. Um, we do kill her because of her mistake, which means we can chase after these guys as well. Um, I make a decision here to try and kill the Leona with my remaining health, because I'm not sure who Silas is going to try to focus. If Silas focused me here, then I definitely would not be able to kill Silas first. However, luckily for me, Silas focused Sojani, the tank who does no damage, instead of me, which is great. So we managed to kill Silas. Nocturne has been free pushing, but since he's low health, Cass can deal with it. The only gets away, which is kind of a shame. Um, but because we got so many kills and Nocturne is like unable to participate and Leona is unable to participate, we go for the Baron. I think this is a good call. Um, like, if you think about it, there's not really anything that could stop us. The one thing they could potentially have would be Nocturne coming in and ulting us, but I'm pretty sure even in that scenario we would be able to finish the Baron because Cassiopeia has teleport. So things are looking up for us. Um, the enemy team has made some really bad calls, which is great for us because before that we made some really bad calls. <laughs> and now the game is sort of even-ish. You can see we're missing two more turrets than they are. Um, and again, the, the gold distribution is not great. I have 5,000 more, 5,500 more gold than Darius. But Silas has 8,000 more gold than Sojani. Nocturne has 3,000 more gold than Cassiopeia. Kate has 2,000. No, I'm just going to pause. Kate has 2,000 over Zaya. But again, lethal tempo completely negates that lead. Uh, and then Zerath has 1,000 over Leona. But yeah, the only person who has a, a, an actual lead is me over Darius, and my lead is still smaller than Silas's, which is extra bad because, again, Silas doesn't just kill one person and then die, which is what Olaf is great at. Silas can come in and kill like two people and then also not die. But yeah, let's just watch this. So we sort of caught Silas out, question mark. Um, I just burn everything to make sure that we can kill him. I burn my Wretch's Glory, I burn my ult, and, and we get him down. So at this stage, with the Baron buff, we can push pretty effectively. I burnt my ult, but that's like the only important cooldown that we we just burnt to get that. Um, there's sort of a very brief discussion 
I think, just in the pings about what we should do, and like, sort of based on our body language, what we should do. And the team decision was to try and end the game before Silas was up. And you're about to find out why I hate this scenario so much. While we watch at a quarter speed so you can just see everything happening. I have no ult. So I can't go on the Sire. I do everything I can to try and make sure that this Nocturne doesn't, you know, kill everything. But while that's going on, Zaya has got Milo, Kate's just flat out died to Zaya, Leona and Darius. Um, and again, I don't have ult, I can't actually get onto the Zaya, so we're going to return to 1x speed. Zerth dies. Um, Zaya then kills herself, That it's very strange. Um, I'm not really sure what the deal there was. Darius pulls me over so that I can kill him as well. Everyone's going to start frantically pinging me back because they think I'm retarded, but I've timed this perfectly, and I can kill Leona and get out, and nothing bad happens. Because I was thinking about what I was doing. And now, now we're going to get this fun fight. Um, so at the start of this, I was just like taunting him, but then the, the recall was genuine. I wanted to see if he was going to follow me with his recall. Uh, Follow me once I started recalling um, to see if he wanted to fight me. Because I'm pretty confident that there is no way he can kill me. I don't know if I can kill him, but I don't think he can kill me. So let's just go back to 1x speed. Uh, with my W and Spirit Massage, you can see I'm life stealing for so much right now. He burns his hourglass, and I'm like, cool, awesome, I can just leave. And then he re engages onto me, which is interesting because. I do not die. And that was the goal of Spirit Visage, Vamp Scepter, and for those wondering, not X, C, I also had Legend Bloodline. So I had 12 plus, Vamp Scepter has another 10, we've got to pause real quick. Um, Vamp Scepter has 10, and my W has 20 at this stage. And then that's also amplified by 30%, and it's amplified again by nearly 50%, because I was nearly dead. Anyway, so let's just backtrack a little bit so you guys can sort of get the setup for what's going on there. Playing back at 1x speed, I recall, oh, ping that my TP is ready, I want to try and end the game again. Hosalus is on a 40 second timer, I think we've got this. I think that with my ult we can end the game. Unfortunately for me, um, I burnt my Righteous Glory against the Silas earlier. I see Nocturne, I figure there is a reasonable chance, maybe a 60-70% chance that I can catch this guy out if I ult and then through Axe. Unfortunately, I do not get the Axe. So now I have unfortunately just replicated the previous um, fight. So I wish I had graphics on the screen, like infographics, to like, sort of talk about what what has just happened. There were two scenarios presented to me, and maybe I should just get this on the screen so you can get a better idea. In this scenario, I can either alt and chase this guy down, or not alt and not chase him down. If I successfully chase him down, we definitely win the game. Um, with only three people on their team, Silas dead, Nocturne dead, even without my ult, I'm extremely confident that we would be able to end the game. Like 95% or better. If I do not successfully catch Nocturne with my ult, I put the chances of winning the game at this at this fight that we're about to have, I put it at maybe between 40 and 70 percent. Um, 40 if I don't evolve, maybe 70 if I do. And so I make the decision based on the fact that I think 60 70 percent I can catch this guy out and kill him. I decide based on the maths I just talked about that it is better to try and burn my ult kill this guy and then hopefully that makes our fight easier here if he's dead 
Again, it doesn't work out. Um, I can't land any of the axes. He dodges a couple of them. And now we have to try and figure out how to win this fight. Uh, so for me specifically, uh, now I have full items after killing Silas again. My main concern is that, and pausing because there's just so much to talk about. Um, if Nocturne and Darius dive onto us, on, onto our backline, uh, onto Caitlyn, Cass, and Zerath, if I help these guys, then the enemy team will deal just as much damage. And I can't guarantee that my backline will survive because Leona can ult them and Nocturne can ult them. And there's... Like, this is so much CC, this is so much burst damage. And then Darius and Desire are just providing some consistent, well, fairly consistent, relatively consistent, sustained damage on top of that. Um, the alternative is I can try to dive Zaya with no ult. Uh, if she's alone, then that's not awful. Um, there's a reasonable chance that I can actually kill her, even if I don't have my ult, but it's not a great chance. It's less than... Less than 80%. So, I'm s it's a lose-lose here. Um, in the sense that neither situation is a guaranteed loss of this fight, but neither situation is good. If I dive instead of peeling, then <laughs> our carries probably die, and I don't definitely kill Zaya. If I peel for us, our carries don't definitely survive, and Zaya is not touched at all because none of us can hit her. So, we'll watch it reduce speed. We start hitting the turrets, Caitlyn places a trap down. Cass and Zareth aren't quite here. And then Nocturne goes onto Cassiopeia. Which is kind of funny. Because that's, that is in theory not bad for us, especially with Cass getting this extra ult onto uh, Darius. You can see I don't really have anything to hit right now. Cassiopeia just gets gibbed. Um, and you can see I can't touch this Zaya because I don't have ult. And so Darius just whomps onto me as well with Zaya's lethal tempo, dealing a shit ton of damage. Um, at this stage, there is no way we can reasonably win this fight. Uh, the best outcome is to simply stop losing it, which is, I believe, what we end up doing. Yeah, we stop losing the fight because we just walk away. Until Silas arrives, at which point, now I'm not sure what happens, I don't remember. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay, turn around. No, she's fine. Maybe. Maybe not. They have a uh, Cloud Drake. Okay, no, they look fine. So we'll just go back and watch that fight in full speed. Because um, obviously everything looks really different. Um, so I want to actually just keep your attention on Zaya for this playthrough. Look how much damage she's dealing, look how fast she's attacking, and look how little threat she is under because I decided not to try and dive her at the start of the fight. And also because I don't have ult and she can just CC me. Um, and now let's watch another perspective. Let's watch Darius in the third watch through of this fight. And just see how even though he has not very good items and he's behind, how it doesn't really matter because our guys are so behind. As you can see, no one's really hit him yet. He got cast halted, but that's the only thing that happened. Um, and then Cast has died because she got feared. And Darius is still, he's never really being threatened. This entire fight, he's never felt like, oh shit, I might die. That hasn't happened. Um, so, other than Nocturne, who got like picked off at the start, their frontline wasn't worried about dying, um, and their backline also wasn't worried about dying. Compare that to us, where both our frontline and our backline were worried of dying for the entire duration of the fight. Um, and I'm really happy on this point, because this is genuinely a huge deal for Olaf is just 
team compositions where he gets outscaled. Not needs, not just the matchup where he gets outscaled against the other top laner, but when his team comp gets outscaled by the enemy's team comp. It's a it's so problematic. And there's no easy fix. Um while the game is sort of quiet, uh, there's a few options I could have taken in my itemization. Um <laughs> I could have gone for a Zeke's Herald, and I could Zeke's Kate, and then try to peel. I didn't think that would be an effective solution because I felt, even with Zeke's Herald, that the Zaya, who also has a Zeke's Herald because of Leona, um, I didn't think that we could have enough damage on the Kate to make up for all the damage that was coming our way. Um, I felt like Zaya would still deal as much damage, and then the front line would out damage us if we fight sort of cohesively together. And we finally do what we should have done 10 minutes ago, or well, maybe not 10 minutes ago, 5-6 minutes ago. We go to the side lane, there's free gold here, there's free gold here, there's free gold here. And we are finally going to take it. It's gonna switch to me. We see Nocturne, we see Darius, so we know that if they defend this they're fucked. Which means we can just walk up to it and Destroy it. Nocturne is now missing, Darius is now missing, um, but the time it takes them to arrive here is too long, so we got another free turret. Again, something we could have done the first time we tried to fight here, and if certainly, if not the first time, then maybe the second time. And then I'm gonna slow things down because holy shit, does Sir Johnny want to lose the game? So Darius isn't really here, but Sojani has just initiated a fight under the turret after missing her ulti. And now Cassiopeia has gotten ultied by Sojani's ult. So the enemy team has been more accurate with their Sojani ults than our Sojani. Um, continuing at low speed, we do manage to get Nocturne, but like, Caitlyn is so low that she can't fight. Cassiopeia is so low that she can't fight. And my ult is running out and I'm also pretty low. There we go, my ult has run out. Gonna go back up to 0.5 times speed. Cass gets dunked, Zerath gets dunked, Cass gets, sorry, Kate gets dunked, and I am the only survivor because what the fuck was this dive? That was basically our entire team's reaction. Um, <laughs> I still have no idea what the expected outcome was, but. Um, you can see I sort of consider whether I should try and stop the Baron. I decide that my chance of success is like basically less than 1% and so there's no point. Um, they get the Baron. And clear out some waves, sort of a little bit. Again, I'm trying to donate farm over, especially I'm full build now, there's no, no point having any money. I even have my elixir. So like, if I get more gold it doesn't do anything. And, well, things are looking real bad for us right now. There's... I honestly am not sure... Okay. Let's... <laughs> let's, let's just rewind and let's, let's watch this whole situation at low speed. So we're in a bit of a standoff in the mid lane. Um, for some reason their entire team's grouping. I kind of expected them to keep still pushing, but whatever. Um, I don't know. Like, we don't want to start a fight in the open like this. If we start a fight, we want to do it here, or here, or here, where the terrain is good for us, where we have a tower dealing an extra couple thousand damage during the fight, um, and where it's really difficult for them to sort of walk into our base. And then Sir Johnny is like, nah, -uh. I think we should try and make this awful fight work, where the terrain is really bad for us, and we have limited vision, and now limited cooldowns because she just burnt ult on somebody that we weren't even touching. Nocturne, ulties onto the Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia immediately dies, doesn't even have time to press her R button. And watching at full speed, no that was not sped up, that was 1x speed. Let's just watch that beautiful thing again. Sodrani burns ult. Nocturne comes in, 
Cassiopeia is missing. Everyone else is missing. And that's the end of the game. There is nothing left for me to do. I figure the only person I can kill here is Nocturne. I might as well try and kill Nocturne, but because there's five people hitting me, I die. And that's the end of the game. <laughs> so... <sighs> I guess there was still a decent amount to talk about in terms of... Olaf in team compositions. Uh, the matchup was pretty boring. It was basically just I ran Darius down whenever I could and Silas half the time came and cleaned me up. And... <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not... Like, there's not much analysis to do there. Um, but I think this game does a really good job of demonstrating one of Olaf's core weaknesses in that he gets outscaled so hard on a 5v5 level if the enemy team has multiple threats that he can't deal with. So, yep, there you go. Olaf is Darius.